I'm here with John Crowley and we're just going to talk a little bit about genomics and, and genome mapping. How can genomics impact our industry as a whole? So the whole, the whole idea behind genomics is getting genomic selection um, more accurate and doing it quicker and um, <coughs> developing a more efficient um, quality product in a, a more timely fashion. Um, genomics really is only taking, taking off very recently because the, the, of a reduction in the cost of the technology. Um, a lot of uh, the research being done at universities like Guelph and the University of Alberta where I'm positioned um, work closely with a lot of um, breed associations and producers in our vicinity. Um, we work on a lot of traits that are kind of hard to measure, like feed efficiency, um, health traits, um, but these all feed back into to more accurate geno or genetic selection with the use of genomics. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned feed efficiency. A lot of work has been done in the pork industry to increase feed e efficiency. And are we working in cattle now to do the same? Yeah, so there's, especially in, out of the University of Alberta, it's probably one of the universities throughout the world that has done a lot of work in uh, feed efficiency. Um, you know, there, there's different feed efficiencies, feedlot feed efficiency and cow feed efficiency, and, and we're working with those. There's a lot of research at the moment um, in Lacombe Research Centre on cow feed efficiency. Um, you know, it, it's, you want to get as much out of your animals without necessarily increasing your inputs. It's, it's any measure of efficiency, whatever business you look at it. So for us, you know, without, we don't necessarily want to increase our feed in, input costs to in necessarily get get an increase in in gains or um, quality product out of our animals. So that's why feed efficiency is an important trait to us. Yeah, and a lot of the work being done is in feedlots, but is there some in commercial herds as well now? Yeah, so feedlots, you know, feed intake is easier to measure in feedlots, and I guess it's an expensive trait to measure. That's why genomics is a good um, a good tool to uh, work alongside um, feed efficiency. Um, but in, in feedlots, feed intake is easier to measure because your animals are in the one location. But it's all, you know, feed intake on a pasture system is also, um, we're also able to measure that. And, and again, at Lacombe, for our grazing cows there, we're, we're measuring feed efficiency at the moment on a pasture-based system. Uh, what can we predict besides feed efficiency and intake from looking at the genome? So there, there's, there's what we call economically relevant traits when, when it comes to animal breeding and it's everything from birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, all your fertility traits, your carcass at the end of the day is what you're getting paid on, um, you know, fertility, you know, any traits that economically impacts your production system or, or improves the efficiencies of your production system, it can be linked into genomics. Um, Every different trait is, is uh, controlled at a different le at a different level or a different proportion um, of genetics. So some traits are easier to work with when we're working with genomics. Others are a little more difficult. But that's where our research is at the moment. Yeah, and we should still keep track of the phenotype uh, of our livestock as well, not just right. Up on that. I'm going to quote a, a colleague of mine in. Uh, in the UK, Mike Coffey, he says, in the age of the genotype, the phenotype is king. Um, uh, it's, it's very easy and very cost effective now to collect a genotype, whether it's just by a little piece of tissue from the ear, a blood sample, a semen sample, a nasal swab, what else is there? Um, yeah, all of those. You can get DNA from any, um, any of those, but the f that's very easy to do now. It's the phenotype is that's where the expense and the difficulty is. So we'll always need to keep collecting phenotypes to to also refine our predictions in the future. Yeah, from a producer perspective, who should be looking into DNA testing? I think from a producer, you know, it's it's very viable at the moment at the pedigree level. Um, the cow calf producer should start looking at it seriously. But if, you know, very soon, if not if not right now, there is um, there's genomic tools for for every. Um, every sector of the of the the value chain, all the way to the packer. Yeah, and it's pretty cost effective as well. It is, and and every day the cost of this technology is coming down. That's why the research is taking off so quickly, and we're now able to even increase our our, our research efforts because of the declining cost. And again, this feeds into it being um, economically viable at a at a farm level as well to use this technology. 
So I'm interested in doing this. What do I do? Is there a kit or something for me? Yeah, yeah. You, if you wanted to collect DNA, there's depending on what you want to collect, whether it's tissue, semen, um, a nasal swab, hair, or blood. Um, contact us at the, the University of Alberta or at Livestock Gentech, and uh, we've got kits for sampling all DNAs, and we'll help you out with your genotyping. What's the easiest one to use? The e if you if you want to mix um, the best quality of sample with the easiest sample to collect, maybe hair or maybe a, 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 an ear punch. Um, but you know, I guess the, the least likely one we want to see turn up is a nasal swab. Okay. But you know, whatever, we can work with most types of DNA. Right on, so we'll just get us a waxing kit for our cats? Maybe? Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll stay away from the waxing parlors for a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Deborah.